Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton outlined vastly different visions for the Supreme Court in the final presidential debate. Here's Hillary. But I feel that at this point in our country's history, uh, it is important that we not reverse marriage equality, that we not reverse Roe v. Wade, that we stand up against Citizens United, we stand up for the rights of people in the workplace, that we stand up and basically say the Supreme Court should represent all of us. Baker Hostetler partner David Rivkin, a noted constitutional scholar and a regular contributor to our op-ed pages, joins from Washington. So, uh, David, that clip that we just played from Hillary Clinton, she says she wants the court to represent all of us. Does the court not do that now? Uh, the short answer is it is not the job of a court to represent either all the American people or some segments thereof. The court is not a representative institution. It's not a political institution. Its job is to uphold the law, specifically the Constitution first and foremost, and then statutes. Uh, the fact that a lawyer of her standing, somebody who actually has a law degree and practice law, would resort to this rhetoric, I, I find quite frankly distressing. And by the way, just to elaborate, uh, she embellished to say, well, we should not stand for the powerful corporations. Can we not agree that if there is a particular dispute between a very powerful corporation, Mary, and an individual worker, but the law happens to be on the corporation side, it's a job of a Supreme Court or any other court to uphold the law? I mean, it, it just, it, it, it's, it's regrettable rhetoric. Perhaps I should not be surprised, but it's, 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 it's very sad to me. So under a Hillary Clinton presidency, would her court in essence become a kind of super legislature? Is that what you're suggesting? Exactly. I mean, she's interested in, and she, uh, the clip you, uh, you played, she's interested in specific policy outcomes. She's not interested in the application of a law. That is, whatever you think about those policy outcomes, even if you're in total accord with her, even if you think, for example, with Citizens United, which is nothing more than giving an opportunity to people who come together, aggregate their voices in a particular format as a corporation or association, if you, even if you think it's a bad idea uh, for, for that to be allowed, you have to look at the First Amendment, what it means. You can't just say, I want this particular outcome. Well, what did you learn about Donald Trump's understanding of the court and the court's role? I hate to say it, but it was, uh, it was certainly superior because he correctly pointed out but the Constitution should be interpreted. And that was an excellent question. Chris Wallace put forward first. The uh, Constitution should be interpreted in accordance with its original meaning. So I, uh, uh, I would salute him for that. And how about our freedoms under a Trump court? Uh, in particular, uh, his comments on the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. Let me say briefly, I'm appalled at Hillary Clinton's uh, interpretation of a Heller decision. She made it sound that this case had to do with whether or not toddlers can be protected from injuring themselves with guns. The Heller decisions, for purposes of your listeners, is about a challenge to a near total gun, uh, handgun ban in the district, where they're basically the only way you can have a handgun in an entirely discretionary mode, uh, the police chief allows you to have one. And it also had a provision that even if you had a lawful gun at home, Mary, you had to disassemble it. So imagine if, if a burglar break in it at night, you have to try to put your gun together. So she grossly, grossly misrepresented what this case stands for. I mean, her view of a, of a Second Amendment, if I can have a minute, is basically this. In theory, I'm for it. But any way in which you want to bridge the right of a people to actually exercise that, uh, that's fine with her. Which, by the way, Mary, is a notable contrast to her view on abortion. There, her view is there can be no restrictions on the right of abortion. And a uh, debate, I think, among reasonable people should be what restrictions? How do you balance competing considerations? For her, abortion is one absolute right. The Second Amendment right is purely theoretical. Well, there you go. A great explanation, a concise explanation of why the court futures future matters and the distinct differences between the candidates. Baker Hostetler partner David Rivkin, thanks for your time today.